So I just went for my morning run. Um, so refreshing, so nice. And it's very hilly here where we live. So this was the first time I was actually able to um, go up the hill um, all the way, um, well, well, half the way of the, I think it's 60 degree vertical. Um, next time I'm trying to hold a lot. Like it's be my target, but it is really hard. Like you need to really kind of do these jumpy running steps to just keep going. Um, but it's good cardio <laughs> exercise. Um, and, um, and then the funny thing that happened is that I think a week ago, clearly there was a brown snake. Um, so those of you who are not from Australia, so, uh, Eastern brown snake is the second world's, world's second, um, most venomous snake. And we have a lot of them in our area here. Um, so Eastern browns and then tiger snakes. Um, but Eastern brown is really, really bad. And, um, anyway, there's this uh, property and then along the fence, just, Next to the pathway, there was a big, basically a whole, whole snake skin of a brown snake's uh, skin. And I noticed probably a week ago. And then, um, and then I was like, where's the snake? The skin is here. Um, but then I've, every time I go for a run or walk, I just forget that the snake skin is there. So then I run and then I jump because I think that it's actually the, um, the brown snake there. <laughs> And, and to be frank, it's not a joking thing. Like my husband went for a walk on Tuesday, I think, and um, he almost stepped on a brown snake. So we have a lot of them uh, this time of the year. And for some reason they are, like I've been told that they're a little bit more aggressive this time of the year. Um, so yeah, it's just important to look where you uh, step. I think last week, um, a dad died in Queensland because of that. And then our local snake hunter, who's an awesome, awesome uh, person and basically goes and catches snakes. Um, his stick broke um, where, when he was trying to get the, uh, was it brown or tiger? I can't remember which one. I think it was brown snake. And um, yeah, he was hospitalized and he spent many, many days uh, in ICU. So it's not a, it's not a joking thing. So anyway, um, I have to be a bit careful when, when running this time of the year and especially no running like off track in the forest at this time of the year, like stay on the paths. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. And then if I walk with the dogs, um, I keep them on the pathway. So not letting them go to the bushes because yeah, unfortunately this time of the year, it's a bit, yeah, yeah, you have to be careful. Um, so that's that. So I think I'm just gonna go and do a bit of stretching after my run. And then I'm gonna make a cup of tea and um, then I see you to show a bit of makeup routine. Bye. take you on the bit of a like a makeup skincare journey today um, this one is what I usually start with so I start with uh, basic uh, skincare and what I'm usually doing uh, over the weekends is that I put the serum on and then I use a trick that I basically mix my moisturizer with the foundation and I apply that on my skin because when you mix them up together if you find a really really good combination it actually will absorb and stay a lot better believe it or not so what I'm doing is that I use my uh, Lemonade Day Fluid and then um, the Dior's uh, Forever Skin Glow Foundation so these are a really really good match one thing that I wanted to say about the skincare before I go going there is that recently I discovered that some of the uh, skincare products that I've been using have acolyte. Um, and thanks to my doctor mom, who basically raised it with me and was like, I just sent a picture of something and she was like, whoa, that is not a very good um, ingredient. It's highly regulated how much you can have it um, in your products, especially the European Union is very strict about it. So if you buy European products, um, this was a French product, but it's actually quite scary because then I started to read about it a bit more and we as women use a lot more products than just that one product. So if the one product is regulated, use 10 of them, you probably get 10 times more. So I am now actually transitioning and trialing a new, um, new brand called Sarah B and this is a French brand, but this has been developed uh, with dermatologists, um, which means that this shouldn't have too many nasties in it 
and it should be very gentle um, good for any kind of sensitive skin or uh, skin prone to acne um, or any kind of blemishes so anyway I'm trialing this one and I'll see how it goes I usually have to try a couple of weeks so that I can um, see the results if it's actually working for my skin but let's get going Now I have all my foundation on, I put a tiny bit of concealer as well and then I just tap it with the brush. So that is then done and after that I usually do my brows and I just use this Chanel um, pencil, uh, crayon sort of seal uh, and the colour is Brune Naturel. And next I'm going to pop in a tiny bit of uh, lipstick uh, lip conditioner. So this is something I just put in during the makeup um, so that then once I do my lip, lips um, then it looks really um, nice and it's um, and, and the color absorbs better. Um, I will do my eyes next so I am using a Dior's palette 539 Grand Ball it's hard to get get it visible there um, the colors are stunning as you can see um, a lot of uh, beautiful uh, cold uh, browns which really work with my skin tone because I don't have olive skin. I have very kind of pale Nordic skin So I need to use uh, colder tones. Um, so let me pop this on So the next thing I'm going to do is um, bronzer. So this is my go-to which is the hourglass um, Radiant bronze light and I just love this one and this one um, it's particularly uh, beautiful when you put it just on the top of the cheekbones like I don't <laughs> I unfortunately don't have big cheekbones I have a very round face but I really like uh, this one and then I usually obviously um, line my my face with it a tiny bit and then once that's done I do this trick that I learned from, from one of the French models is to put in the middle of the nose um, so that it looks very sunburn <laughs> and it looks nice. I don't tan, so this will make it look a bit like I've been under the sun, which I never. Um, after this one, I will do my uh, blush. Um, so I use this channel one now. Usually I am using uh, Bobbi Brown's uh, Pale Pink. Finally, I found it in Australia. It's been sold out for ages. David Jones finally has it. I just ordered it. But this one is actually really good. It's not as pink, uh, but what I like about this is that it gives a bright blush, which I like. I, again, want to go more for red tones here, uh, like a cold, colder red uh, rather than brownish uh, contour. So that's that's that. And before I move to my um, eyes, um, I just wanted to show a couple of the products. So uh, Lumine does really nice products that are liquid versions of, the other one is liquid uh, blush and the other one is instant illuminizer. And what these are really good for is that if you want to carry makeup uh, for work and you don't want to take the powder versions, these are really nice. They come in this beautiful pot and you can use it. And I can show a tiny bit. It's quite nice. Um, nice shade uh, you just pop pop a tiny bit and then um, use just a brush um, and it gives really beautiful glow um, and usually for glow I actually use my MAC go-to this is what my sister got me addicted to ages ago but this one is actually a really nice liquid version so uh, you just pop in a couple of drops here and again you can just use the same brush to uh, mix it up a bit and um, yeah you just see it gives like a really nice glow glow to the um, cheekbones so yeah it's a it's a nice easy to carry with product if you want to try it
last touches. So I'm using this Givenchy's um, Prisma Libre and I just uh, pop it into my areas which I know that might get a little bit uh, greasy throughout the day. Um, this also comes in a travel version, so I recommend to get that if you want to trial. Don't pay for the whole size because this is quite chunky and not practical to carry with you. So if the travel version would have been available when I first bought it, I actually would have just gone for that because you want, want a little bit smaller. Smaller packet, this is, this is enormous as you can see, so it's not very practical. Um, and then last one, setting spray. And then I will do lips after that, but this is just... Um, and I have to say, I prefer the Morpheus um, setting spray, but this is okay. So at the moment I'm using it, and when it's, when it's finished, I'm gonna go back to my Morpheus spray. Last thing I'm gonna do is to do my lips. I use this Revlon very, very nude uh, liner, and then I have Dior uh, color for 18, that is a beautiful nude, so I'm gonna pop that on. So I just um, dropped my son to the um, birthday party, and now I'm just coming to the local DFO, just around the corner. Um, those who don't know what DFO is, so in Australia we have um, so-called factory outlets, so you just get really good um, staff with, I don't know, 70, 80% off, like amazing, quite American style and I love it. So I'm just going to pop into the r Billings and then um, maybe Witchery, uh, maybe Oraton, I like those brands, so they are all in the same DFO. So I'm just going to quickly pop in before I pick him up um, from the birthday party. So I just came back. Um, from the birthday party and shopping was really good. I found a couple of nice pieces which I will show you in the upcoming videos. Really nice outfits, uh, perfect for my European holiday coming up. Um, and then I cleaned the house and I have to say I'm kind of sick of cleaning this house. Like my Saturday mornings or afternoons always go to cleaning. So um, I told my husband that I think it's time for us to get a robot vacuum cleaner at least for downstairs so that I don't have to do both floors. So, yeah, we are getting Dyson Robot. We have to. So I just decided to put sauna on. Um, it's a gorgeous sort of autumn weather. So I just came here and um, just setting it up. And then in half an hour, it's ready to go for an afternoon sauna session. So yeah, sauna was one of those things that um, when we got this place, that was the first thing that I wanted to build and we built it during, during the COVID. So we got Finnish builders um, building it, the same guys that did the Sydney uh, Olympic Village saunas and it's incredible. Let me show around. I'm gonna to head to the sauna shortly um, it just has heated up um, that was my vlog today and I hope you enjoyed it and um, I see you next time bye